Thanks, Nathan, for the introduction. Um, as Nathan mentioned, we're going to be talking about disruptive analog mixed signal IP that we are building at Omni Design for specifically for deep submicron technologies. So thanks for coming here and for your interest. I'm going to start by introducing the team and the company and our vision as well as the product and application areas of focus. Then we're going to take a slight detour into examining data converter trends. Um, finally, we'll get back into Omni Design technology and then we'll um, see how we stack up to the rest of the world. Okay, to give you a little bit of my background, I have more than two decades of experience building high performance, high speed um, data converters and low power circuits. Uh, I have a doctorate from MIT in 2001, where we pioneered, along with Professor Harry Lee from MIT, techniques in ultra low power reconfigurable analog to digital conversion. In 2007, after having been at a couple of startups, we founded and I led Cambridge Analog Technologies, CAT, uh, also a company focused on low power IP that was ultimately acquired by Maxim Integrated in 2011. I remained at Maxim as the general manager and executive director um, of the Advanced IP Solutions Group. And uh, then in 2015, a group of us got together and founded Omni Design Technologies. At Omni Design, we, our mission is to develop and license disruptive semiconductor IP to enable differentiated and complex systems on chips. Essentially, we have invented what we believe to be the world's lowest power uh, switch capacitor technology that we are leveraging along with other techniques to build and provide innovative solutions in a whole variety of uh, different IP cores to our semiconductor customers uh, for um, a whole bunch of, again, uh, targeted to uh, numerous applications. We have a fantastic leadership team that includes world-renowned circuit experts. We have Professor Harry Lee from MIT. He's our chief technologist. We have Sid Datta, our vice president. We have Dennis Daly. He's our vice president that he's focusing on connected sensors. Pawan Hanumulu is a professor at University of Illinois, Urbana champaign He's our principal technologist. And Dr. Hian Bu, he's our engineering director um, focused on leading our ADC projects. This team has a tremendous depth in terms of expertise, but also tremendous diversity in their experience. We have a to all total combined more than 140 years of experience in building silicon products. We have more than 65 patents, more than 100 silicon products, and more than 245 publications in peer-reviewed journals and conferences. We also have, to one credit, uh, numerous industry firsts. We have uh, been at the forefront of what um, some of the le industry leading parts. We also have a really cool advisory board, both on the academia side as well as the industry side. Professor Ananta Chandra Kasan, he's uh, the head of Department of Electrical and Computer Science. Um, and we on the industry side, we have Drew Peck, Dr. Dirk Lockin, and Venk Shukla. My apologies. Um, all from the industry. These guys are really amazing folks. They actually get their hands dirty and help us out a great deal. We are headquartered in Silicon Valley, in the heart of Silicon Valley in Milpitas, California. Our Boston design, we have a Boston Design Center in a town called Billerica, Massachusetts. We have essentially four areas of focus at Omni Design. Okay? The first one is analog and mixed signal, where we build really low power data converters. We also build other associated products such as D2A converters, analog front ends. In the wireless communications focus, we are essentially taking what we have built in the analog mixed signal side and customizing it for our high-end wireless customers. Okay? On the wireless signal conditioning, essentially we have really cool redriver retimer technology that allows us to extend the cable length for standards such as the 10 gigahertz USB. On the connected sensor platform, essentially we are building really differentiated low current, low voltage band gap references, real time clocks, regulators, LDOs, and a whole host of other things. In fact, we have an entire platform that we are putting together with, in concert with partners. Um, Dr. Dennis Daly is going to be talking about this particular aspect of our focus tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. 
greatly um, uh, recommend coming for that as well. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of a detour um, where we're going to do some, uh, kind of explore how analog to digital converters have changed over time. Essentially, look at some historical trends in A to D converters. Okay. To answer this question about how data converters have changed over time, we're going to start our journey in 1997. Okay. What we have done here is we have collected data points from some of the foremost journals, um, from the foremost conferences and, and, and publications, um, uh, uh, performance metrics from data converters that were published in the year 1997. Okay? So each of these orange bubbles really represents a specific ADC that was published in 1997. Now, these are some of the best conferences. So suffice it to say, these are some of the very cutting edge in A to D converter design and research. Each of these bubbles um, has a certain size, and the size has some meaning. It represents the resolution of the converter. Okay? The larger the size, the greater the resolution. Smaller the size, lower the resolution. Okay? The x-axis is Nyquist sampling rate, which is the normalized sampling rate for any given converter, whether it be oversampling converter or a Nyquist converter. Okay? Um, and the y-axis is figure of merit. Okay? Figure of merit is essentially a parameter that we have extracted that represents the how good an A2D converter is, the goodness of an A2D, so to speak. Okay? To be on the same page, I'm going to define figure of merit. Um, it's power divided by the product of sampling rate times 2 to the power, raised to the power of effective number of bits. Okay? So FS here is the effective Nyquist frequency, which is essentially 2 times the maximum input frequency. Okay? E knob is the effective number of bits. Notice that um, if power consumption is low, um, in other words, A to D consum con converter does not consume that much power, then the figure of merit goes down. Okay? If the performance is high, in other words, the sampling rate is good for the same power, or the resolution is high for the same power, then the figure of merit is also goes down. So a good ADC has low figure of merit. Okay. Now, coming back to this chart, I'm going to play a short video where we are going to increment these years and observe how these dots, these bubbles, change over time. Okay? Essentially, what we're going to be doing is tracking the state of art in A to D research. Okay? We expect certain few, few things. Okay? As the years go by, you're going to find these bubbles go downwards. In other words, figure of merit is improving over time. Okay? They also move to the right side. Okay? In other words, people are trying to increase the sampling rate over time. Okay? For the most part, there are a couple of dots on the left-hand side which turn out to be extremely high-resolution ADCs, 120 dB SNR types. Um, but for the most part, people are trying to push the sampling rate higher and higher. Okay? Let me play this video one more time. So they're moving down and to the right. Okay? It's a cluster of points, but for the most part. Okay. So to give you a big picture, this is the entire cluster of data points we just saw, okay? all the way from 1997 to 2015. To make sense of all this, um, you know, to try and answer the question, how, has, how have ADCs changed, what we are doing here is representing data points from 1997 all the way to 2015 in blue and red. And essentially what we find is that um, animation is a bit broken. But what we find is, for the most part, if you compare these two different years, the data converter performance has improved by more, much more than 100x. This is unbelievable, right? This is amazing. Great, great job by all the ADC designers. Essentially, the, well, how has this happened? It has happened because of two fundamental reasons. Process scaling, which has helped increase the speed for the same power. Although process scaling doesn't help resolution that much, simply because when the voltage levels go down, SNR goes down. Um, and human ingenuity, right? Creativity. So what people have done is developed and innovated in circuit design, as well as created uh, from some very fundamental basic archi ADC architectures a bewildering array of hybrid architectures that you see represented here. Okay, almost 50 different architectures represented in different colors. Okay, now I could spend a whole lot of time here, but we have to move to the next segment. Um, Coming back to Omni Design, 
our Swift technology essentially allows us to take any switch, op amp based switch capacitor circuit and reduce the power consumption dramatically. Okay? We not only reduce the power, it also turns out we can increase the signal speed for any given ADC channel. Okay? What does this mean? This means that we can build high, high speed, high interleaving converters with fewer interleaving channels. How is that good? It reduces the energy of the non-ideality that comes from interleaving. Okay? So in other words, we can build higher performance interleaved ADCs. Okay? It also is a bonus to, uh, you know, it also enables us to build deep submicron um, uh, implementations. Okay. We have a number of patents describing this technique as well as other analog processing techniques. Um, this has been published in 2015 and we have some information on this on our web. I would love to spend the time to describe how it works, but for that, let's, you know, I'm happy to answer questions afterwards. Um, this plot here represents a fast Fourier transform of the data converter. Um, this has been built in 65 nanometer TSMC LP um, at sampling frequency of 250 megasampel per second and an input frequency of 12 megahertz. We find that signal to noise and distortion ratio is 67 dB and the Spurious free dynamic range is greater than 84 dB. And these are very respectable numbers for this speed. Okay. Um, when we increase the input frequency, we find that the SNDR remains essentially flat, okay, all the way from low input frequencies to high input frequencies. In other words, it has very robust performance across the Nyquist band. SFDR as well is pretty respectable throughout that band, okay. If we change the sampling frequency on the other hand, this ADC, you have to keep in mind, was designed for a maximum frequency of 250 megasol per second. If you go beyond that, you find that there is no catastrophic failure. It degrades gracefully, which is exactly what you want for production chips. Okay? If you lower the frequency on the other hand, you find that the signal to noise ratio, uh, SNDR rather, is pretty much flat. SFDR also remains pretty robust. Okay? Now, this is great because it allows us to leverage this technique, underlying technique for building data converters that, are flexible, that have flexible power consumption with sampling rate. In fact, some of our products have this feature, and it is great for customers who want to have multiple modes in their products. Okay, how do we compare to the rest of the world? To answer this question, we're gonna go back to the cluster of points we saw, okay? And to enable a fair comparison, right? It turns out, you know, you would want figure of merit to be that one unifying parameter that allows us to compare converters at different resolutions. Unfortunately, that's not the case because figure of merit changes with resolution. It turns out it is easier to build low, uh, better figure of merit um, ADCs at low resolution than it is at high resolution. Okay, so very important point to keep in mind. Um, to enable a fair res resolution uh, the comparison, what we are doing is constraining the performance to a sampling rate of 200 megasol per second, right? ADCs that are higher, high speed, okay? ENOB of 10 and a half bits and SFDR of 75 dB. Turns out these specs are actually right down the middle of what customers request from us routinely, especially wireless customers, okay? Now, when we do that, we find that there's only four data points remaining on the chart, okay? And to get a better idea of what's going on, uh, we're going to zoom into this particular box. And when we do that, um, we see a little bit better. Now, the lowest data point here uh, in terms of figure of merit is a paper by Hian Bu. He's our teammate. Um, published, um, you know, it's paper published at the International Solid State Circuits Conference in 2015. It leverages Swift architecture. We have um, other ADCs that leverage the same technology and build 250 megasol per second and 500 megasol per second ADCs. We also have other ADCs in, in design at higher speeds. Okay, so in summary, um, these data converters that we have built, our building, are essentially much better than those out there, at least to the known, in the known literature, literature. How do we compare to the industry? So what, to answer this question, what we have done is we have taken some of the very best data converters from uh, four different IDMs, okay, and plotted them out here against Gen 1 and Gen 2 versions of uh, Omni Design um, ADCs. Okay. We find whether we compare these um, data converters to um, the published work or these Gen 1 and Gen 2 architectures, we are far ahead. Okay. 
please note that we have made sure to pick only those ADCs that are in the, are the ballpark of our SNDR, okay, so as to enable a fair comparison. Also, we have extricated power consumption from other sources. So we have just made sure to take the power consumption only from the ADC core, from these different um, works. That brings me to the end of my talk. Um, thanks very much for your time and interest. We are very eager to reach out to customers and partners, so um, i happy to answer questions now and, and after the talk, as well as please come to our booth at 2018 is the booth number. Thank you very much.